Hi everybody, welcome to our video spotlight this week. Uh, I'm Mike Martin, back with us is uh, John Fanning, our fine wine buyer. Uh, exciting today, we're, we're going to be introducing two new wines to the store uh, called Boundary Breaks, and they are from the east side of Seneca Lake. Uh, a new project, um, I've got the semi-dry and the dry, I've already poured the dry for us, um, and we're going to check these wines out. It's a brand new project, uh, sort of innovative for the Finger Lakes. Um, the owner is, uh, I, I believe, from New York City. I'm, I'm not really sure where he's located, but um, a different and kind of progressive model for the Finger Lakes is in 2008, they bought land, planted Riesling. They're going to do only Riesling, mm -hmm. and at the moment, there's no tasting room. They're making the wine off-site. So kind of the, uh, kind of the European model mm -hmm. of make the wine in the vineyard, you know, vines first, land first, and, uh, and go from there. So they planted in 2008. I think at this point they have about 12 acres planted and they're doing four wines. They're doing yeah. a, and kind of single clone Riesling's interesting angle. So they're doing a dry, two semi-dries and a reserve kind of late harvest Riesling. Um, as you said, east side of Seneca Lake, kind of uh, prime real estate in the Finger Lakes, what they call the banana belt down mm -hmm. on the southeast side there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, planted in 2008, 2011 is very first vintage. And we met with these guys maybe two weeks ago and yeah, really... Yeah, the owner and the vineyard manager, and then one of the the vineyard helpers, I guess. I so, yeah. yeah, a young kid, but definitely knew what he was doing. Um, this is uh, number two thirty nine. So this is the dry that we're going to taste first. Um, I, for me, lime and, and orange. A yeah, lot, yeah, ton, ton, tons of kind of pith fruit there. Uh, it's really focused, really lean, nice acid. You know, and I, I can't stress enough. In the Finger Lakes, a lot you see uh, outside uh, investors or. or um, you know, second career folks mm -hmm. who buy, you know, buy a building, open a tasting room, buy some, you know, grapes, and suddenly become a winery. Where this is really taking the, um, in my opinion, correct approach and yeah. um, more quality oriented approach. Yeah. Where they they bought land and they're they're building from the ground up. And and, and, all, and only like focusing on riesling is 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 a good I think a good idea. Great idea. I think it's a pretty. Uh, I think we spoke about in other videos. Mm -hmm. Fairly big issue in the Finger Lakes is wineries try to produce too many varietals, right. and they're trying to do Riesling and Cabernet Sauvignon mm -hmm. and sweet wines and dry wines, and um, obviously Riesling is the most proven varietal in yeah. the Finger Lakes, and these guys were smart enough and aware enough to yeah. to recognize that and focus on it. Okay, so that was the uh, that was the two thirty nine. So now we're going to go to yeah, clone one ten, which Riesling. is their semi dry. Maybe I'll uh, both of these wines are fifteen ninety nine. Uh, I think their price point is a lot of this is going to go to Manhattan, is from, from what I, I believe so. Yeah, restaurants. So we have we have some up here. About a third is going to stay up here, and two thirds are going to go to the Manhattan restaurants. Um, the the dry is uh, about a half a percent residual sugar, twelve percent alcohol, and the uh, semi dry that we're going to taste right now is almost three percent residual sugar, about eleven percent. So, but I don't remember it being. You know, really sweet at all. I think you know, like any classic Riesling with some residual sugar, the the acidity is there to to really cut it and back it up and keep it keep it balanced despite despite the sweetness. Little little more orange orange lime. Um, they describe pear here, but I'm not really getting the pear. Um, interesting. When I was reading some of the lit literature, they were talking about the window for these wines um, f up to about four years. For the dry, and I think it was seven to ten years for the uh, um, semi-dry. It'd, it'd be interesting to taste these. I down agree. The road. Yeah, I think structure-wise, that, that makes sense with these wines. Uh, yeah. They don't seem to be built for, for a super long age at this point. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, first first vintage. So uh, yeah, still I, I wouldn't say experimental at this point, but very first vintage for a for an exciting new project. And I think you know, if you've been watching the videos, we focused on the forge riesling. Right. Between the forge and this project, both coming out in the same year. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen one, you know, much less two exciting projects mm -hmm. like that happen in this region. Yeah, and these, long, long I believe, are all done in stainless steel. They don't taste any oak like yeah. with the forge, yeah. you know, that little touch. But super clean, great minerality, um, bright fruit. I really, really like them. I, I think they're phenomenal. Yeah, really focused and, and just correct. And, yeah. And, and, and yeah, exciting new project. So yeah, keep an eye out for it. I think yeah. Boundary Breaks is going to be another great new Finger Lakes winery. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Supply wise, do you think we're okay? Um, I Not believe sure. so. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're still, you know, quite small production, but I think they're just getting off the ground. Yeah. So um, I think we're one of the first 
larger retailers to really get behind them and we'll be able to get okay. for some time. Very good. Well, I, I can't stress enough. Definitely check these out. I think they're, they're phenomenal. All right. See you next time. Thanks.